I am going to show you how to take a 2D AI generated image and turn it into 3D Nanite Mesh. So let's get into that. Here's the list of the things that you'll need and all of the links will be in the video description below. So first things first, we need to generate an image. So we'll slash imagine. What are you doing? Just what the fuck are you doing? So you can generate an image of anything that you'd like. I'm going to do Egyptian hieroglyphs. This is an important thing to note. If you use this dash dash v space five command, that's going to use the version five of mid journey. And another thing that you want to do is a dash dash tile command. If you don't use that dash dash tile command, it's going to give you an image like this where it's on an off angle. There's shadows, there's specularity, and it's not going to be as easily usable. Sometimes it can produce results that are usable. It's going to give you something like this maybe, but more often than not, it's something that you can't really utilize. So we're gonna hit enter and let that generate. And another thing that is important to note if you're using this in Unreal Engine 5 is that it uses powers of two for its textures. So if you generated a different aspect ratio, like a seven by four, four by seven, three by two, something like this, you're going to have to go in and manually change the image in uh, Photoshop or GIMP or something like that in order to get that to a resolution that is acceptable for your Unreal Engine. All right, now that we have our image generated, we're gonna open it up in the browser and right click and save an image as. Just make sure it's saved as a PNG, cool. And the next thing that we're gonna do is go to an upscaler website. I'm gonna use upscale.media and you're just gonna go ahead and select the image that you generated. All right, now it's upscaled from 1K to 2K and it was fairly quick. Taking a look at it, it definitely looks a lot sharper. Depending on the image that you generated, you might've lost some detail through the upscaling process, but it's important to upscale it because you want the larger image for the next part that we're going to do. And so we're just gonna go ahead and click download image and we'll go ahead and open up Blender. All right, so now that we have Blender open, we're just gonna make a plane and scale it up by four and make sure to apply the transform. For the next part, you wanna make sure that you have the deep bump add-on installed. Right there, you just hit the little checkbox after you install it. And we're gonna open up a another tab here, open up the shader editor and give it a new material. And if you have the Node Wrangler add-on installed, you can press Control T. That'll bring this up. And we're gonna open up that image that we upscaled. And if I switch to the material viewer, there it is, pretty good looking image. On this right sidebar here, you're gonna see deep bump right there at the bottom. And you're, all you have to do is make sure you have this image node selected and you're gonna hit generate normal map. All right, after a few seconds, we got our normal map. It's looking pretty good. And with the normal map selected this time, we're gonna hit generate height map. And that was very quick as well. And this is our height map. What I like to do after I've generated my images is open up the UV editing tab. And with the newly generated height map, I'm just going to make sure it's selected and go to image, save as, and save that image. And you wanna do the same thing for the normal map because if you don't, then if you deleted this object, those generated height maps and normal maps are going to disappear. We're gonna tab into edit mode, select everything, subdivide a few times. I like to do it like five or six times. And you'll want to add a multi-resolution modifier and you wanna hit this simple button. But before you do that, you wanna come up here and enable statistics so that you don't generate too many faces that your computer can't handle. And I know that my computer can handle around 4 million. We'll stick with 2 million, that's plenty. And we'll have to open the sculpting tab. Now in here, there's a few settings that we're going to change. And that is going to be over on the sidebar here. So we're gonna open up the tools for the draw brush and we're going to change a couple things and that's going to be the texture we're going to add a new texture and then come down to this checkerboard here and open the height map you don't have to do anything else here that's all good and then you'll come up here to the tool settings and we're going to change the mapping under texture to from tiled to stencil and we're going to change the stroke to anchored and we're going to change the fall off to constant. And so if you mouse over the viewport here, you'll see this image and you can right click and drag to move it around and shift right click to scale it. And you just wanna line it up as best as you can. And I've done this 
probably a hundred times and I've never gotten it completely correct. There's always like one line of pixels on one side or the other that doesn't want to be sculpted. So another th setting that we're going to change is the strength. You want to bring it down between 0.12 and 0.2, something like that. I find 0.18 to be perfectly fine. And you want to scale up the brush. And all you have to do is click and drag. And there you go. You're going to see it pop out of a low resolution and high resolution. And if you don't want that to happen, all you have to do is hit this checkbox sculpt base mesh. And so we have our height map imprinted onto this plane. And that was pretty quick and easy. And so I'm pretty happy with that right out of the gate. Um, if you have like a an actual face or something, you might see uh, the height isn't translating very well. You can just come over to the tools here and use the grab brush and grab the mesh, move it around a little bit and do whatever you need to do in order to make it look the way that you want it to look. I'm just going to leave it as it is. There we go. It's looking pretty good. And like I said, you'll see like one line of pixels kind of gets stretched on some of the sides because you can't line it up perfectly. If anybody knows how to align the stencil perfectly to whatever you're sculpting, that'd be great. So now that we have our 2D generated image uh, as mesh, we're going to edit it a little bit. You want to apply the multi-resolution modifier. And I like to tap in the edit mode and get rid of these edges. And this is going to be pretty laggy because there's so many faces. But I just go ahead and select those and delete them. And depending on what you want to do, I actually want this to look like a tile. So I'm going to go ahead and go around here and select all of the edges. And I want the edges to be completely flat. So I'll grab them, G, Z, and just bring it down slightly. And then I will scale it on the Z axis and scale it by zero. And that'll make that nice and flat. So the nice thing about the uh, tileable image is that you can use an array modifier if you want to extend this out. And look at that. You can't even tell where the seam is. And you can add a second one, change a couple settings here, do that on the Y axis. And there you go. That's looking pretty good. I'm not going to apply those for this demonstration. Another thing that I like to do is go over here and add a decimate modifier. And you can usually reduce this at least by 50% with no loss in quality of the geometry. And because we're using Unreal Engine, you can triangulate it as well. So we'll do that. And I'm going to bring it down by 0.4. So we'll lose 60% of the geometry. And you're going to notice that there's really no difference. So and there we go. I can't really tell if there's any quality loss. Maybe you can if you have a better eyes than I do. But that's looking pretty good for me. So I'll apply it. Now that we have our mesh, we're going to come up here to File, Export, and export it as an FBX. And you can export it to wherever you like. And for the settings over here, you can just limit it to selected objects and only do the mesh here and under geometry you want to change this from normals only to face and you can check triangulate faces we already did that but why not and you can uncheck this big animation and we'll export it now that we exported our fbx we're just going to open up unreal engine and import it in there all right now that we're in unreal engine we're just going to come down here to import and you're going to navigate to wherever you save that FBX. And this options panel is going to open up. And right here, build Nanite, you want that check where the other settings are all looking pretty good. So you just go ahead and hit, hit import. This is an error that you might see pop up. This is something that I haven't found the solution to, but it doesn't seem to do anything to the mesh. So we have our mesh imported, but we need a material for it. So we're just going to go ahead and right click material Egyptian tile we're gonna go ahead and open that up in the content drawer figure out where that is and shift click drag them in and you can make this a lot more complicated than it is but we're just going to connect the albedo and the normal and if you hold one and click bring this up and you just plug that into the roughness and you can change that to where whatever you'd like it to be um, I'm just going to do like 0.8 hit apply and save We'll close out of that. 
and we'll drag in our tile. It's looking pretty good. And we just need to apply that material to it. Now we have a nanite mesh. And there you go. There's the triangles from the nanite. And that's looking pretty good. Nice and easy. And if you look closely, you can see that it's a little jagged. Generally, you're not going to be this up close to the mesh. So just from looking at it from afar, it's a lot of detail that you can add to your scene without uh, sculpting this entire thing by yourself, which I would imagine is going to be pretty daunting. Another cool thing about this is if you turn on snapping, you can just alt click and drag this and tile it that way. And so there you have it. It was nice and simple. Didn't require too much fiddling around. I don't think this should be the hero of your scene, but I do think for something in the background, this is going to help you focus more on what is going to be the hero of your scene rather than the background stuff that people will see but not really notice, if that makes sense. Thank you for watching, and I will do more of these types of videos in the future. Um, I will probably do one on deforming what we generated into like a pillar or maybe a vase, um, something like that. And anything else that I find out that's pretty cool. So like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thanks.